from the health sector, the plans has been espoused and all of that. Talk to us about the confidence it gives you for the next chapter of the country. Well, I mean, just like every sector of the country, it is always work in progress. If every part of this country had fit for purpose primary health care facility, there wouldn't have been the need for a general one. After COVID struck, an assessment of our health infrastructure showed that 88 districts in this country don't have a fit for purpose health facility. What it tells you is that Ghana is a country with a lot of work to be done. This government has been bold enough to say that we are taking on all the 88 plus other regional hospitals. And that's what led to the general one. The project is worth $1.756 billion. As we speak, this government has paid over $350 million in IPCs. It means we mean business, like Dr. Bamiya said. And I believe that, by the grace of God, by the end of this year, we are working with speed to operationalize some of the general one. All I can tell you is that, in the first term of Dr. Mamun ba Baumia, all the district hospitals in our general one will be completed and operationalized, all of them. The regional hospitals, they are a bigger project than the district. Some or all, I believe, will be completed. But the assurance is that every general one district hospital would have been operationalized by the first term of Dr. Ba Mahmoud Baumia. There is another aspect that we've not talked about much, which is the op job opportunities. A general one is estimated to give job opportunities to over 67,000 Ghanaians. Every district hospital takes an average of 500 people in terms of jobs. Every district hospital, from doctors to nurses to lab scientists to cleaners to orderlies, we are hoping and expecting from the calculation that over 67,000 Ghanaians will get jobs from a general one project. Let me also say quickly that outside a general one, the Kufuado government has added close to 4,000 bed spaces to our, in fact, if you add the first term to now, we've added over 8,000 beds. So the no bed syndrome is becoming a thing of the past? Oh, as you increase the bed space, you are going to dissolve, dilute, and eliminate the no bed syndrome. Recently, myself and the president, we commissioned Kumewu Hospital, we commissioned Formina, we are working to commission Sewia. Sewia is a regional hospital in the Ashanti region with about 250 beds. Afari Hospital, the military hospital, it's also expected to be commissioned before the end of this year. That has over 500 bed capacity. If you go to Confanoche today, the maternity block, which was started by a champo over 40 years ago, which was not touched under uh, 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 any government in the Fourth Republic, Ekufuado has started the maternity block worth, I think, worth about 45 million euros. The point I want to make is that even outside our general one, we are doing a lot to increase the bed space. I am happy to also mention that we are concerned about the morale of health workers. That's why Dr. Baumia is saying that every health worker will be assisted to get a vehicle. We are also going to make sure that the colleges for specialization, College of Health for uh, Doctors, the College for Pharmacists, and even we have plans to work on a college for allied health so that together we don't only give opportunities to health workers, but we also help them to specialize in their fields of work. I know that this government has spoken to exporting health personnel out of the country. That started, we're hearing some 200 uh, nurses are expected in Barbados. Uh, talk to us about that plan and how you're seeking to increase the export numbers in the coming, in the coming years. Well, Ghana fortunately has a track record of producing health workers who have very high level of professionalism and their expertise is also very unique. The island of Barbados approached Ghana to help them uh, get some health workers. We did that a few years ago. The report is that when you go to Barbados, the Ghanaian health workers, especially the nurses, are doing tremendously well. So they asked for a second cohort of nurses, which have gone to Barbados. As we speak, they've come for a third one. The point I want to make is that as we speak now, Ghana produces more nurses than it requires. In fact, there are hospitals in Ghana now where there are more nurses than patients. And so we have to find a very structured way. When I say structured, a lot of nurses are going abroad on their own. Uh, private businessmen are exploiting them. Like Cuba does. Cuba is a country that sends doctors across the world. But it is structured. The country is involved. Ghana 
is finding ways. And under Dr. Mahmoud Baumia, we are going to have a structured way to make sure that nurses who are, who are trained in excess in Ghana are able to go to UK, are able to go to Barbados, are able to go to US, are able to go to Germany under a program that will make sure that we also get some money back. We cannot use millions of cities to train nurses and then they will end up in someone's country without getting anything back. The more money we get back, the better we can also put infrastructure to train more health workers. And so this perception that if you see health workers going abroad, it is because they are not happy here, with all due respect, it is not correct. There are health workers in UK who are moving to Scotland and to America. It's a global world. What we have to do is to have the structure to keep enough for our service and to export those for also income generation. Honorable, just one last thing in relation to the free uh, dialysis you're giving to, to the kidney patient. Uh, that's been in session. Uh, we've, got, we've got reports that it's happening in other places, but it's not happened at Kolebu. And the, the fact that the renal units there were shut down as well again because there's no consumables. Has it come to your attention? What are you seeking to do about it to enable? Because the, the kidney patients there say that uh, a number of their colleagues have passed away because the renal unit at Kolebu is not working. I think we have to understand that from President Kufo, in fact from President Rollins to now, any Ghanaian who had kidney disease paid for their own dialysis. It's not just today that kidney patients are struggling to pay for their dialysis, but it is because of the good work of advocacy groups, you the media, their issue has come up. I'm saying this so that we understand that it's a problem that pre-existed some of us. But the good news is that if you have a big problem, you have to start solving it, if not entirely, small, small, or start from somewhere. The Ekufado government, the Ekufado Baumia government, has started paying for kidney dialysis for those who are 60 years and above, and those 18 years and below. Those in the middle, we still, in the Baumia's first term, will find innovative ways to provide support. If not to pay outrightly, we will subsidize their dialysis. What I want to say is that Kolebu has had challenges because of the numbers that go there for dialysis. I talked to some patients who go to Kolebu. They said, when they dialyze you in Kolebu, you feel better. So even when others have their uh, service, they prefer Kolebu. Because we've seen this preference, the Kufuado government, government has built an ultramodern new urology nephrology center. Very soon, I think I took some of the media there. We are going to place over 20 dialysis machines in that center. It will be commissioned within the next four or five weeks. 20 new dialysis machines. This will make sure that all this trouble of people not getting access would be a thing of the past. Like Dr. Baumia said, leadership is about solutions. This government would continue to take on challenges and solve them. The best hope for this country it's in a leadership that identifies problems and solves them, and not one that runs away from them.